Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Future Tech Podcast. It's me, Charlie Sell, the uh, board director of Major Group, where I get a chance to speak, interview, have open conversations with thought leaders, senior people within the worlds of STEM and technology, asking them about their story, um, talking about topics close to their heart, and that all important career advice for young people looking to enter a career within STEM and specifically technology. So I'm really pleased to have Dene Lafia, and uh, I hope I pronounced it right, uh, Dene, um, with me today, who is the CIO of one of the UK's largest um, hospital trusts. Um, and has come from quite a background into his journey, which we're going to hear a little bit about in this podcast. So without further ado, uh, Dede, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Charlie. Hi, everybody. Thanks for, for listening today. Um, and I'll introduce myself a little bit. So I'm originally from France. I'm not sure you can recognize from, from my accent. Uh, I arrived in, in the UK 14 years ago. Um, but I, I uh, studied and started my career in uh, in France in a city called Bordeaux. Um, just a little bit my myself, my background is quite a technical background in in, in the technology area. Um, I study um, technology uh, and specifically IT in uh, in a French university. Um, I did a, a bachelor degree in coding and programming, so I've learned how to uh, to write softwares and 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 application. Um, and then I did a, a master degree after that in um, uh, the application of IT system for, for finance and, and logistics. Um, after that, I, I worked as a consultant uh, for a company called Atos Origin. It's one of the big um, IT consultancy companies, uh, which was great. That gave me an opportunity to travel uh, across France. I uh, did a, a lot of projects in, in various cities in the country, get to meet some, some, some great people. Um, and then I, I moved to London and to the UK, uh, where again I, I did a, a consultancy role in a, in, a, in a small company, where I got to, to travel in different places. I will go to work for exciting companies um, in different industries, so for, for car manufacturer, for telecoms, but the, the, the best one was for Cadbury where I got to, to walk next to the, the chocolate factory and had uh, a free uh, chocolate on my desk every every morning. So that, that was really nice. Um, and then I moved into healthcare, uh, where I find really my, my purpose and uh, using technology to, to improve um, people's lives through, um, through the, during their stay in, in hospital. Um, so yes, yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing now uh, in, in London. Fantastic. Um, I mean, what's lovely is you've moved from both in the private sector into the public sector and, and have probably been able to bring uh, a whole variety of skills and, and, and lessons. But what have you found? Yeah, how, how has that journey been from, from education to then consulting and then into the public sector? What's, what's been the big learnings or differences? So I, I think the, the big difference between the, the private sector and, and the public sector is um, uh, some of the rules and regulations that you have to, to, to work within. Um, for example, employment law are, are different in the public sector and, and in the private sector. Um, they, there is an approach which is a, a bit more about, uh, about people and making sure we can, um, we can look after staff, uh, where the private sector sometimes can be a bit more brutal. Um, and that, that goes some some pros and cons in, in both area. Um, so because of course rewards in, in the private sector sometimes are more financially driven and um, and things like bonus which uh, we've got in the private sector don't, don't necessarily exist in the public sector. So I think both area are, are worth exploring and I think they, they all have uh, pros and cons. Um, obviously working in, uh, in the NHS is, is a great privilege and there is a huge sense of, of purpose. Um, which I really, I really want to encourage uh, people to to not think just about the money elements because getting out of bed every day to to support clinicians who will then look after patients, uh, whether it's in in a hospital or mental health or primary care, is very rewarding in 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 a different aspect. Um, so I'm, I really, I really encourage people to explore both elements and and find where where uh, they, they they fit best. 
Um, I think prior to that, the consulting element was, was really good when I was young. I got to travel a lot. Uh, I was staying in a hotel Monday to Friday with some colleagues uh, around the same age than myself. So it, it, it was a great experience. Every three months working in a, in a different city for a different company, uh, learning a bit uh, about processes, whether it's, you know, how, how we manage stock in a, in a, in a car manufacturer, um, some utilities companies, like I work for, for British Gas for, for, for some time. So understanding a little bit the, the challenges in the energy sector. And I think that's one of the great things with the technology is you can work in every industry, your skills are transferable. So what you learn in, in one place, if you want to explore something different, you can transfer these skills in, in, in another place. And some of the things I've, I've learned in, in my consulting role, I'm now able to bring them to the NHS and to hopefully make a, make a positive difference. So I think that that's one of the great elements of, of technology. It's, it's everywhere. Uh, every industry in the world now uses the technology from social media and one extreme hand to, to, to healthcare. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's uh, one of the advantages of working that field. Yeah, and I, I just really love that point about how, you know, technology is universal. It's STEM as a subject is universal and and, um, and you can have it to define a purpose. You can have it to chase money if that's what you want, or you can have it to, to travel and, and experience many different things. But it provides so many career opportunities in, in many different ways. And um, I remember when we were speaking prior to this we we talked about how can technology be accessible or careers in technology be accessible and it's not just or it shouldn't just be for people who are either incredibly well educated or, or have the finances to to go through university but but really it should we should try and open it up to to people of all walks of life how throughout your experience how how important and what have you seen about ways of getting into technology if, if you don't have that that economic fortune that others do yes it's something very, very close to my heart because I'm, I'm myself from a, a very small village uh in in the southwest of france my my families were farmers and uh, we we didn't really have access to uh, to capital or or high level of education i was one of the first one in my family to to go to university um, so in, in France, we are privileged because universities are free, so we don't have the same problem in, in UK where, where it costs a lot of money. Um, but I, I would say that uh, technology helped me uh, to, to, um, to, to improve my, um, my financial situation because, as you say, there's, there's really different roles in, um, in, in the technology space and they're quite well paid uh, roles. So, you know, it, it's really a significant improvement from, from where I'm at. I'm coming from um, and I think it's uh, uh, the good thing with technology is it doesn't really matter what your accent is, how, how you sound, how you look, you know, when, when you're dealing with a computer and you, for example, you do programming or you're dealing with a network issue or a database or all these very technical elements, it is pure logic, pure science. You get judged by the computer, no, no, nobody else. So if you're a little bit introvert, if you're a little bit shy, it can be an area where you can really excel. Um, I think for me, the, the, the best uh, advice is, especially for people who like logic, who like mathematics, who like, you know, when, when there is uh, fairness as well, uh, it's, it's a very good field to go because uh, the, the computer has no prejudice. And uh, if you write a, a, a poor piece of code, you will press a button and it will tell you that, that it's wrong. Doesn't really matter how, uh, who you are. Um, so I think it's it's a great way to um, to, to to start start a career. Um, there are ways to 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 self learn as well, and there is a lot of uh, online courses. Everything is online today, uh, especially in in, uh, in for technology, because the, the internet was made by people who are in technology for people who are in technology at the beginning. It was a very obscure world, which of course now is open to to everybody. But there is an incredible amount of uh, of uh, documentation and, and data online. So it's just about finding the motivation and finding the will to to explore these um, these resources, because most of the IT jobs we find the answer online. We go to Google 
And with what we know, we, we find all the answers of, of what we don't know. So, of course, if you can and want to go to university, I will encourage it. I, I did it myself, and I think especially the degree is a very, very good thing to, to have. But if you, if, you, if you don't want to take this financial risk and don't put this financial burden on, on yourself, there's a lot of other ways to, to get into technology. And if you work hard, if you study, if you spend the, the, the time to, to, to learn, the, the reward is, is unlimited. Um, I, I just before this, I was looking an article online, and uh, there is a, a website called JobServe, which is one of the big uh, search website for, for for jobs. And in the US, they were saying that 11 of the top 20 jobs are IT and technology jobs. And by best jobs, they, they look at uh, salary, they look at the capacity to work remotely. So all all these things make, make technology and, and specifically IT a very very attractive uh, place to 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 go uh, later. Yeah, and it's it's so clear to see your passion for it, um, Denis. So it's, it's 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 so so clear. And um, I mean, out of that, I, I I really resonated when you talked about fairness and self learning, and I, I couldn't agree with you more about. The sort of the fairness aspect of of engineering and technology, with with the computer being the the unbiased central point of truth on on who you know who's got the capacity or the capability. Um, over the last five ten years, you know, from from your world of consulting and then moving into the public sector, have you seen engineering and technology become more diverse and and um, and how can it be more accessible to, you know, gender diversity or neurodiversity? Is do you see it evolving? So I think for for gender diversity, it's, uh, we we are very lucky in healthcare because healthcare, um, I think eighty five percent of of staff in in the hospital are are are, are women. And we've got a lot of them then moving into technology roles. So instead of studying technology, it's later in their career where they want to do something a little bit different. And, and we see it a lot, especially after COVID, with critical care nurses who are really burned down uh, with uh, with uh, with uh, dealing with with COVID. And now they are they are coming to to us and say, oh, could I could I play a role in, in, in technology? Because that's another avenue to, to, to get into, into this area. So I, I really am lucky because in my, in my team, we've got a gender um, uh, equality, I think, between um, women and, and, and men. But generally in technology, it's true that there's a lot more um, men, men representation. Uh, I think it's, it's really starts from a young age. Um, and um, I, I, was, um, I was talking with... Uh, with uh, the, the daughter of a friend, and uh, and she told me, oh, but it's not cool to study technology. It's it's for boys. It's not cool. So th th there's this idea at, at a young age that it's not cool and it's it's for boys. Um, but it's it's um, it's really a shame because when when you grow in the adult life, working in technology can become really cool. Um, and uh, the mentality have have changed now. So I think you know I really uh, encourage young girls and, and, and young boys to, to go into technology, it, it will be very cool in, in the adult life and more and more. Yeah, and, and I, I totally agree with you. And I think this is, you know, this is one of the main things about this podcast is is trying to open up the eyes to many young people that, that technology, you know, it 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 can be cool. It can be, it's, it's, it's cutting edge, it's revolutionary, it can change lives. Um, and and you know it, it should be accessible and um, to to anyone of any gender um, ethnic background any neuro neuro type of background. Um, so it's it's about trying to positively promote the world of STEM and technology, which it sounds like the public sector and especially within the NHS are doing actually very well if they're helping to cross train or or let people enter technology, um, even if they're from a, from outside the industry. No, absolutely, and uh, we we've got anonymous CV, so CV we've got no information for uh, any in in the characteristic. Uh, 
So um, recruitment process. So that, that's something that's uh, really, um, really open to, to everybody. And as I say, it's, it's all about um, intellectual capacity, logic, capacity to, to work together and, and to resonate. That, that's what we, we, we judge in people based on. Um, for some of the, the role, we, we had a big uh, recruitment campaign last year. I think we recruited 150 um, new, new staff. And, and the only prerequisite was to pass a test which was based on logic, mathematics, and, uh, and very basic uh, coding rules. And that, that's the filter, that's how we rated candidate. Because it, it's, a, it's a role to configure a new health record system for, for, for a hospital. So we really want to make sure we, we assess people based on, 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 on this logic and, and, and type of, uh, of cognitive skills. Not, not on anything else. Um, one of the good things as well with, with technology and reflecting on, on my own background is I'm, I'm, I'm born in an in a area, in a part of France where there is not a lot of opportunity in terms of uh, jobs. But now since COVID with the remote working, if I was still living in, in my remote village in France, I could find a, a job and a, a, with, a, with a good paid job and exciting uh, opportunity and do it remotely from, from, from my village. So I think the, the world has changed and now even geography is not, is not an issue anymore. And if, if, if you live in, in a remote place and you don't want to be in, in a big city, you don't want to come to London, there will be a lot of job and opportunity for you to work from, from your local community and still being part of your community. So I think that's one of the great advantage of, uh, of IT and, and digital worlds. And that's such a good point. You know, it really is now um with as long as companies continue to embrace uh remote working and, and that flexibility it's it's a wonderful part of of being in that industry so time has flown by as always and it's to that time now of where those, those wonderful bits of career advice so for our listeners then do you have one or two bits to of advice that that would help a young person get recognized or stand out from the crowd when they're trying to enter a career in technology? So my first advice, uh, I got it from a YouTube video. I'm sure some of you watch this YouTuber will say, well, how to become rich in uh, in five minutes. And uh, it's 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 all, all nonsense, of course, um, because there is no magic recipe to, to, to become rich. But money is important and uh, it's important to understand how, how you can uh, improve your your economical situation. But um, the, w one, one of these uh, video I, I watched, the, the guy made a very good point. He said, invest on, on yourself. And that's really my, my first advice. If you want to improve your, your, your situation, you know, it's not investing in Bitcoins, investing in, you know, magic ways like this. It's invest in your skills, invest in your brain. That's the best investment you can do. And every hour you're going to put in investing in your brain and developing your skill will have an exponential uh, improvement financially later on. So it's, it's really the, the first advice I would say to, to young people. Learn, learn, learn everything you can. Use every opportunity to, to learn something that is meaningful and that will help you to, to, to grow in your career. We all spend a lot of time on our phone, our computers, and this time, a lot of time is, is wasted. If you were investing just a small percentage of that in learning new skills, learn about coding, learn about database, all that is online. Everything is available. I'm sure everybody knows how to use Google. It's all in there. But really invest this time in learning. That's the best way if you want to be rich. That's the best way to uh, achieve that. And what a fantastic uh, uh, a lesson. You know, invest in yourself and and things will happen. I guess there is absolutely no no shortcut to yeah, to, to career progression or wealth or, or or anything else. You've got to you've got to really invest in yourself first. What a what a lovely tip, I think. That's a that's a really special one. Well, Danny, thank you. That's that's another podcast coming uh, coming to a close. And what a wonderful way to to summarize it. So um from for me to to all of our listeners um this is another episode of our future tech podcast and our podcast can be found on the arrows group forward slash podcasts but also um on the stem ambassadors uh network um and on linkedin so for now a big thank you to denny thank you thank you charlie thank you very much for having me 
And to our listeners, this is another episode of Future Tech.